Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and this is our lesson about the basics of linear equations, or in other words, equations that have both an x and a y in them. We have to deal with that x and that y. First off, when you get an equation that looks like that, 2x plus y equals 10, the first thing that you should do, the first thing I recommend that you do, is to solve that equation for the variable. I suggest use it, solving it for the variable of y. Get y by itself on one side of the equation, everything else on the other. And that'll make more sense later on, but for now, just trust me, that's a good idea. So to do that, you would subtract 2x minus 2x gives you 0, so that leaves you with y by itself on the left side. And on the right side, you'll have a negative 2x plus 10. Just write it in this way with the variables first and then the number second. So that's your new equation. You want to write it like that. Now, when you're asked to solve an equation, you can be asked to do that in two different ways right now. Um, later on, well, you can graph it and do other things, but for now, I'm going to suggest that you do this in, in one of two ways. All right? You can set up a table of values that will give you different answers, or you can substitute in ordered pairs, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. First, let's go ahead and show you how to set up a table of values. A table of values is a table like this that has a list of x values and a list of y values. All right? So you're basically going to say, if I put in an x value into this equation, what do I get for my y value? You can pick any values you want for x. You can put in negative 1,000. You can put in fractions. You can put in decimals. But for me, I like to keep it easy. So I'm going to put in the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Like I said, you can put in anything, 10, 20, 30. Um, I always use 0 because it's nice and easy. All right? And this is what you do. Again, you're setting up this table of values. You can pick whatever numbers you want. These are your x values. And then you take your equation and you substitute in the value for x. So I had the number x equals 0. I plug that into my equation. Now I'm going to solve negative 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 10 is 10. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 10. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to change it. When x is equal to 1, what is y equal to? When x equals 1, I just go back to my original equation plug in 1 for my x value and solve. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 10 gives me positive 8. When, one, when x is 1, y is 8. And I'll keep going. When x is 2, y is 6. When x is 3, y is 4. When x is 4, y is 2. You'll see a pattern here, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. Look at that. Um, anyway. With these equations, you will oftentimes see patterns like that, sometimes not quite as obvious. But there is one way to solve this equation. All right? Basically, what you're doing is you're putting together values, an x value and y value. When x is 0, y is 10. When x is 1, y is 8. When x is 2, y is 6. When x is 3, y is 4. And when x is 4, y is 2. All right? These are called ordered pairs. All right? And they're usually written, and you'll see this in just a second, um, but they're written in a certain way. The other thing you could do if you're just given this equation is that you'll sometimes be given some sets of ordered pairs and be asked, are these ordered pairs part of this equation? If you ever get that question, again, I would simplify the equation to having y on one side. And then I'm going to substitute in those values. Remember, with ordered pairs, just like we had in that table, it's an x value and a y value. And it's always written alphabetically. So x is 1, y is 0. That's the first ordered pair. 1, 0, x is 1, y is 0. So I'm going to take those values, x being 1 and y being 0, and I'm going to put them into this equation where I see an x and a y. It'll look like this. There's x and y. Here's my equation. y is equal to negative 2x plus 10. I'm going to substitute y equals 0 and x equals 1. 
into that equation, and now I'm going to solve. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 10 gives me 8. 0 is equal to 8. All right, that didn't work out so well. 0 is not equal to 8. And what does that tell me? That tells me this. When x is equal to 1, y is not equal to 0. 1, 0 is not a solution to this linear equation. All right, so I can cross that off. That one is not part of this equation. And now I'm going to start over. x is 0, y is 10. And I'm going to substitute exactly the same way. y is equal to 10, I'm going to put that in there. x is equal to 0, I'm going to substitute that in and solve it. 10, and then on this side, 2 times 0 is 0, 0 plus 10 is 10. That one is true. So that's a true statement, 10 is equal to 10. We've solved it all the way, so that means 0, 10 is a point on this equation, all right? And this is somewhat repetitive. Each step of the way, I'm going to go back to the original equation, substitute in the value, in this case, x is equal to 3, y is equal to 4, and I'm going to solve. 4 is equal to 4 at the end. It's a true statement. I'm going to put a green circle around it. Final answer, or, equa or ordered pair, 4, positive 7. I'm going to substitute the value of 4 into that equation everywhere I see x. I'm going to substitute the value of 7 in everywhere I see y. I get to the bottom, 7 is equal to 2. No, it's not. 7 is not equal to 2, so that point 4, 7 is not on this equation. All right? So from these four ordered pairs, only two of them are solutions to this equation. Okay? Now, those are basically the two things that, that we know how to do or we can start doing with, with um, equations that have x and y. We can set up a table of values, which is very helpful, and we can substitute ordered pairs. All right, if we're asked which ordered pairs are part of the solution to this equation, we can substitute them in. All right, just looking forward a little bit. An equation with x and y values is called a linear equation because it's the equation of a line. All right, so if we were to graph this, it would be a straight line. And the ordered pairs, or the x values and y values, are points along that line. So when we said, are the ordered pairs a solution for this equation, we were saying, are these points on this line? That's basically what we were saying. And because it extends forever in both directions, there are an infinite number of solutions for each equation that has an x and a y value, okay? And each of those solutions will be, can be written in the form of um, a linear ordered pair right there, x, y, all right? So those are the things that you will see. You're going to see those coming forward when we move into future lessons. Just remember, anything about linear equations, we're just looking at the equation of a line.